All right, we're back again for another show, a Q&A show. Anything that we say is not meant to bypass your medical care. Check with your doc before implementing all the things that we're going to chat today about. Um, let's dive right in. Steve, what do, what do we have on the agenda today? Well, we've got tremendous input from social media. Now we're getting more and more excited as Rumble continues to move up the ladder for people who are joining you from that platform and asking lots of questions. I notice on the, on YouTube, there's little hearts coming up from the comments. So obviously people are, uh, you know, adoring uh, Dr. Berg and his show. So that's terrific. And uh, enough said about that. Speaking of Rumble, let's go right to it. Say Dow, uh, 10 from Rumble. I just got rid of a canker sore after watching your video about B12 deficiencies. Could that deficiency, I guess, also be the reason I have trouble breathing while playing soccer? It absolutely can, because think about what B, B12 does to your uh, your red blood cells. You need, uh, if you ever heard of uh, uh, pernicious anemia, you know, that's a, it's a type of anemia. So, yes, you could have uh, anemia from B12, folic acid, iron. So, yeah, that's probably why you ran out of gas. So, we need that B12. B12 uh, comes from animal products. However... Um, even if you're consuming animal products and you don't have enough hydrochloric acid to extract that vitamin from your meat protein, uh, you can have a problem with that. So there's, or there's many different reasons why you can't absorb it, but um, um, definitely B12 could make you out of feel out of wind, especially if you're climbing up any incline. All right, very good. Good luck with that. So pump down some more B12. Uh, let's say Cha Chao 1125 again from Rumble. Can you please help me with my acid reflux? I bought your book and follow many of your suggestions, including drinking lemon juice, <clears throat> excuse me, with apple cider vinegar uh, and limiting my meals to twice a day. Thank you in advance. A lot of people uh, get relief by taking apple cider vinegar with uh, acid reflux because we want to acidify the stomach. So that way the valve at the top of that stomach closes nice and tightly. Now, <clears throat> You may want to use another thing. You can do a search online. It's called betaine hydrochloride, which is an acidifier. And you take maybe three or four or five or even six of these before you eat a meal. And uh, that will help to acidify the stomach and allow you to digest a lot better. Uh, then you do that over a period of time until you don't need it anymore because you build up your stomach acid. So it's kind of a precursor. Um, and... Uh, you know, if you have heartburn, like I did going through college and didn't even know what to do, you know, I took the opposite. I took the antacids. So I was taking Rolaids and downing these, uh, this calcium carbonate, like dude, I'm going out of style. And it just felt better until the next time I ate, it got worse, 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 worse until I finally learned about doing the opposite, right? Just like with so many things you find out, uh, go in the opposite direction. You might do even better. So that's what I would recommend. Try it and see if it works for you. No guarantees, though. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, anyway, <clears throat> yes, good Good luck to you. That's really a rotten uh, condition that so many people around the globe have. <clears throat> Speaking around the globe, let's uh, check in, find out who's checking in with us. A good morning to all of our viewers joining us this morning from the UK, Canada, Mexico, Jordan, Palestine, Ireland, Ethiopia, Turkey. <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat. Armenia, Syria, Spain, the Netherlands, St. Lucia, Lucia, Poland. South Africa, Armenia, Albania, uh, Aberzan, Aberz, Baj, oh, I can't say that. Help me, Terry. Aberzan, Bajan. Oh, right, my tongue's not working on that one. You know what I'm talking about, audience. New Zealand, Portugal, Peru, Scotland, Chile, Aruba, Finland, Eritrea, Nigeria, Croatia, Thailand, the Czech Republic, Sweden, the Dominican Republic, Greece, Egypt, Trinidad and Tobago, Norway, the Congo Republic, Mozambique, American Samoa, Argentina, the United Arab Emirates, Bermuda, South Korea, uh, Australia, Oman, India, Cyprus, Pakistan, Tasmania, haven't heard from them for a while, China, Nepal, Iran, Jordan, Bosnia and Her Herzegovina, uh, Dubai, Morocco, Germany, Ghana, the Virgin Islands, Uzbekistan, uh, Qatar or Qatar as you might pronounce it, Switzerland, Slovakia, Kashmir, Zambia, Sri Lanka, Romania, Colombia, Belgium, the Bahamas, Rwanda, Singapore, and all across the United States. That may, in fact, be a record. I'm not sure, but that's a whole lot of people interested in feeling better and living better. So thank you all for chiming in as usual. Okay, Nur, um, let's see, Nur Jimenez from YouTube. 
It was a pleasure to meet you in person at the summit in Boca. Tell Steve we're waiting for him to bring that ring that bell again. All righty, Rue. There we go. That's just for you, Jimenez. Uh, Noor, yeah, Jimenez. That, so. that, was a, that was a great convention. Um, I'm going to be doing another one at the end of um, April. Hopefully people can come out. It's going to be in Texas, I think Austin, if I'm not mistaken. But that's going to be the health hacking event. It used to be KetoCon. And then uh, there'll be another one at the end of August, which is going to be the Low Carb USA one is another one as well. So I'll be speaking at both of those. So yeah, it was great to meet a whole bunch of people that apparently see me on YouTube, but I don't see them. So it was great to meet them in person. Wonderful. Well, thanks for chiming in with us. Uh, and I'm glad you had a great time with Dr. Berg. He's a swell guy. <clears throat> and uh, what you see on TV, you now know is what you get in person. The same, same keto um, observant guy. So Christine, doctor, excuse me, Christine from YouTube, I've lost 38 pounds on a low carb and prolonged fat fasting. But my friend who's three weeks into the same regime has lost only four pounds. Can you help her? Y y yes. This is the problem with comparing yourself to your friend or your spouse. Um, it's not good because there's a lot of things that can happen. You know, what about your history with insulin resistance? What, how bad was that? Or some people, especially women that are menopausal, they have um, atrophy um, and it looks just like fat. And so um, in this process of healing, here you're eating healthier, right? You're exercising, you're getting more muscle mass, which can offset that, that weight. Um, Personally, what I would recommend, which you might not want to hear this, but I'll tell you anyway, um, I would switch your goal. Put the weight loss to the side temporarily. Focus on your health. Focus on your strength. Focus on the, 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 the hunger going away because you're in deep ketosis and your appetite, I mean, no more cravings. Your, your clothes are looser. And then start working on... Um, building up uh, more lean body mass, which is ultimately going to help you burn more calories, especially as you get older, um, we lose the muscle. And then th there goes the metabolism. So if you can preserve that muscle as long as you can with your life, um, it'll come in handy as you get older. All right. Wonderful. Yvonne from Facebook, what are the best supplements for rheumatoid arthritis? A horrible thing it is. There is um, a lot of things you can try, um, like vitamin D will help you a lot and take maybe 30 to 40,000 I use. Um, there's another uh, precursor called pregnenolone that is uh, kind of like a building block of all of your hormones. So not all of them, but a lot of them, especially cortisol. And so when you don't have enough of that, what happens is that um, your cortisol goes up. Now, out of all the risk factors for so many health problems, believe it or not, age is the biggest risk factor. People get, have more problems as they get older. So what do we do? Well, um, by the time you reach 75 years old, you're... Pregnenolone, which is kind of a precursor to all these other hormones, uh, tanks like 60%. So you could get some of it as a supplement to have more of a pre-hormone to build up normal amounts of certain hormones, which is not a bad idea for a lot of uh, people who, especially as they get older, they have more problems, both men and women. Um, but also um, <clears throat> realize that there's another precursor even before that hormone, and that is cholesterol. So if you're on statins or you're on a low fat or low animal um, diet, like you don't have a lot of fat in your diet, that can literally starve off all the raw material to build up these hormones and you can have a lot of problems. So uh, just for the fact by when you increase more cholesterol food um and even that supplement like i just mentioned pregnenolone you can actually um decrease rheumatoid it used to be it used to be a big treatment 
way back in the day until they came up with steroids. So anyway, it's uh, something to play around, test, start off with the lower amounts, like 25 milligrams, uh, and then slowly increase it because, um, you know, if you're female, if you have like way too much, you can get maybe a little bit too much testosterone. Um, so, but a lot of women, especially they go through menopause, they drop their testosterone way too low and they need to bring it up a little bit. So anyway, um, that's what I would recommend. All right. Very good. We'll hop over to Facebook, but first let's get uh, our first question out to the audience. There it is, doc. All right. So, um, let me see if I could just blow this thing up a little bit here. Okay, good. What does cod liver oil have that regular fish oil does not have? Oh, good question. Audience, leap on it, if you will. Uh, hang on just a second, and let me look here at Facebook. So, uh, Nina Q, my period has been off since fasting. How can I fix this? Didn't say how long she's been fasting, but what can we do for Nina? I think, I think when you eat, you need to really make sure you have all the nutrients because there's going to be, there's obviously this hormonal shift, and you want to make sure when you're... Um, you're on fasting that you have enough reserve of these hormones. And so, especially the fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, E, D, K1 and K2. And so, I don't know why someone always asks a question that's directly related to the, the question that, <laughs> I, that I'm asking people right now. So rather than give you the answer, let me just um, hold off with my answers until we answer the second question or the first question that we're on. It's funny how it's correlated. Like if I'm asking a quiz question, Steve, you actually answer, you ask a question that relates to it a hundred percent of the time. I don't that's know why. That's awful. Is. I know that's terrible. Well, I'm, I'm so looking for odd sounding uh, diseases and, and stuff that that's the only thing my poor little brain is remembering. I should put two and two together with the rest. And we're going to work on that for future shows. Maria from YouTube can you please discuss the supplements that might break a fast? That's an interesting question. Any supplements with a lot of calories, like if like any type of the protein, protein powders would do it, whey protein powder. So, you know, you might call it a supplement. Uh, anything with sugar in it, um, electrolyte, I mean like, um, the, uh, what do you call them? Um, vitamin drinks have sugar in it. So anything like that, but typically if you're doing just regular vitamins and minerals, you're not going to run into a problem with breaking your fast, but it needs, unless it has calories, uh, or, um, sugar or even protein. All right. Very good. Uh, let's see, Sonia from Facebook. What should I do for a hiatal hernia gastritis and esophageal? Jack poor thing. I think I think what I would do is I would um, I would do that uh, manual. Uh, it's a technique. It's a it's a technique that I show people manually, just kind of massaging the um, the area underneath your your sternum, which um, can help push that back in, and uh, then start working on the hydrochloric acid by taking betaine hydrochloride with the meals. Uh, I think that would help you greatly. If you have any inflammation in your stomach, gastritis, whatever, don't forget about um, zinc carnosine. Oh, okay, very good. Well, the audience is on it as usual. Uh, we, you asked, what does cod liver oil have that regular fish oil does not? 59% of our respondents say it's vitamin D, 21% say it's omega-3s, 10% say it's vitamin A, and 5% say DHA, and the final 5% say iron. Any winners? Okay. So fish oil and cod liver oil have the DHA and the EPA. Those are omega-3 fatty acids, okay? The EPA is for inflammation. The DHA is for your brain and your nerves. But cod liver oil has um, a lot more of two additional things, vitamin A, by a large factor. In fact, if you compare like one tablespoon of cod liver oil uh, to what you would need in typical fish oil, you would need about 12 
1000 milligrams capsules or soft pearls. So, you know, that vitamin A is like, it's, it's one of the best sources of vitamin A that you can have cod oil, which is good for the mucous membranes of your sinuses, your mouth, your throat, and your lungs. So it's an immune, very important immune factor. And it's really important to build up resistance against developing hypothyroidism, especially Hashimoto's. So remember that. Um, you can get also vitamin A from egg yolks and liver, but cod liver actually has the most if you if you per volume. Um, the other thing that cod liver has that fish oils don't is vitamin D. So, Steve, did your grandmother or mother parents ever give you cod liver oil? I, I think it was castor oil, which was awful. Uh, uh, I don't recall getting, and castor oil, as you know, back in the 50s, early 60s, cured virtually everything. So that's why I'm still with us today. It's as a well. cure all. I, I tell you what, those of you that are watching, I'm just curious. Did your parents or grandparents give you cod liver oil? Because that was very popular and all of a sudden disappeared. It's too bad because that's uh, that's has some serious benefits in that um in the cod liver oil i mean for your immune system especially for um a woman who's pregnant to have a child that comes out that without needing to have braces or or um to prevent like bone deform um deformations and and, and also to prevent um, problems um like rickets and then in, in adults it's called osteo Malaysia, which is a softening of the bone. So, um, yeah, for good dental structure, the jaw, how the teeth fit, cod liver oil, you can't go wrong with that. But if you want to also add one additional thing, Steve, if, when you decide to have more kids, um, add some grass-fed, grass-finished butter. So you have the vitamin K2. Huh. So that way it works with that calcium. So you add the vitamin, the butter with the cod liver oil. Now you're... Now you're going places, Steve. Yeah, well, I think I know what happened to cod liver oil. They discovered that castor oil tastes much worse. And so with sadistic glee, they moved over to castor <laughs> oil and made us all line up for that. So anyway, by the way, cod liver oil, like so many other things, can you just simply trust a, a brand? I mean, if you go on you know, Amazon or something, or is there something you should watch out for in trying to find good cod liver well, oil? Well, of course, I'm not biased. I will tell you I do have my own brand. Um, it's in a capsule. But um, typically, though, if you're getting a um, cod liver oil wild, wild caught, you're not going to have a lot of heavy metals. They, they, in order for it to come in the U S they have to do testing. So you're not going to see a lot of heavy metals. Um, and plus the, some of these like mercury, for example, is water soluble. So it's going to be more on the fish meat, not the oil per se. Um, so you're typically going to get a clean product, but, um, you know, and you can even, you know, if, if it smells a little bit fishy, that's not the rancidity, rancidity usually. It's just the fish proteins that are in there. Um, so I would recommend uh, getting it in smaller bottles. And that way you can use it up quick and it doesn't sit there a long time. Now, of course, I have mine uh, freeze-dried in a capsule, which lasts longer and you don't get the burps. But anyway, that's just um, some options. All right, good. Well, I'm ashamed I didn't know you had it. I will order some of those capsules and march toward good health. Plus, you don't have to drink it out of a spoon, so I really like that. All right, so uh, anyway, we're going to go to Shweta, who is from Richmond, Virginia, my hometown. But Shweta, what we want to do first is just throw out uh, a quick question, then we'll come to you, and here it is, Doc. Second question for the day. Okay. What does cod liver oil, I think I may have asked that again, if I'm not mistaken, if you want to go to the next one, I think you'd, we just have to flip through the next one. That's question. ridiculous. But Sorry, there we go. Again, if, just to make it easy on everyone. Okay, so number two. Okay, which is fattier, beef liver or beef steak? Interesting. Interesting, because we've all heard of fatty livers, probably has no correlation at all. But uh, anyway, okay, Shweta, let's uh, bring you up. From Richmond, again, my uh, birthplace, Shweta. Uh, if you've unmuted yourself, you're on with Dr. Berg. Good morning, Dr. Berg. Hello. 
Hi. Uh, so, Dr. Berg, my question, which I have 30 seconds for, is uh, I'm a vegetarian and I struggle with uh, hypothyroidism, premenopause, and acidity. I have a couple of gallstones and sometimes I go through abdominal pains, you know, and the pain goes all the way to the sciatic nerves and to the legs. And then it's really, really painful. Um, sometime in 2021, I had a major financial loss. And after that, my stress just went up the roof. Um, I saw the videos that you've shared on stress and abdominal pain and what it does inside the body. That was quite shocking. Um, and since then, you know, I have lost a lot of uh, muscle weight. Um, I experienced fatigue, um, extreme hair loss. Um, I've got very, very dry skin and my body aches have gone really, really bad. I just wanted to take your help. Um, I started the apple cider vinegar with lime. I have come on no sugar and that's not, that's very recent. But um, I just want to find out, um, I am taking a thyroid medicine. It's thyroxine 0.25. Uh, I just want to find out what would be the best diet for me to go forward. Tell, just tell me uh, what, what really quick, what do you eat on a given day? Um, like I said, I'm not very, now I've started fasting. So, you know, I have my breakfast like 9.30, 10 o'clock, and it's mostly lotus seeds, uh, oatmeal, uh, dry fruits, and uh, dates, dates mm -hmm. or fig, but no added sugar and a cup of coffee. Um, apple, and then my, I'm a, I, I'm a healer and also a driver for a cab. So my eating hours are not so regular. Um, so I try to eat one meal then in the evening, like let's say that could be seven or eight. And that's mostly like, I like sauteed vegetables, olive oil and rice. Um, I totally gave up on wheat. Um, I'm not able to digest wheat so much. So that's pretty much it. And I would snack on a lot of these protein bars. Mm -hmm. But I don't think, um, you know, they have so much sugar in it, so I kind of give up on it. Okay, one more question, okay. Um, do you ever get bloating in your abdomen? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So I'm going to release a video on this topic because the bloating is one of the best indicators to know if you're on the right diet or not. <laughs> um. I think you should do an experiment unless this diet is against your religion. I would recommend that you, um, you do carnivore for a week, fish, eggs, if you want, if you want to do lamb, whatever. But here, here's the thing that uh, would be very interesting. Um, you're going to be probably shocked to find out how much the seeds, the nuts, the other foods are just creating inflammation in your gut and, and throwing off your microbiome. I mean, there's the people that do this, like all of a sudden the bloating completely goes away. Their hormones start coming back. Their energy starts coming back. Their thyroid starts coming back because think about just think, let's just take the thyroid, for example. Um, where the thyroid desperately needs vitamin A, where are you getting your vitamin A? You might say, well, I eat, I'm eating carrots. Yeah, that's not vitamin, that's precursors. You'd have to have 45 pounds of carrots to get your retinol. Um, so retinol uh, only comes from animal products unless you are converting and you gotta be really healthy to have that conversion. <laughs> and a lot of people are not healthy enough to have that conversion, so they're starving of vitamin A. Well, so vitamin A comes from the egg yolk. It comes from the cod liver oil. It also comes from, um, you know, beef liver and things like that. Now, this is a completely brand new change for a lot of people. But when we start looking at your health and you just try it, you'll be shocked. You will literally be shocked and you will go, wow, I had no idea. I wish I would have known a long time ago. But I did what you did for many years. So I know exactly what you're going through. And uh, I used to just have this constant bloat all the time which is an indication that something is not quite right. I don't really know, you know, if I would be able to switch on beef, but, you know, I have asked for supplements of cod liver oil and, uh, um, you know, I do have eggs and I used to eat fish for a very brief time and I just gave it up. I don't know why, but I just gave it up. So, um, 
you know, maybe I could introduce it slowly, but I do not really know about beef. But like I said, you know, the other part I could definitely introduce into my health and see. Um, yeah. Also, a quick question, Dr. Is that happened that I'm 49 right now and, uh, you know, premenopausal, could it be that, you know, with this extreme amount of stress and the whole estrogen and everything messing up in the system that it affects you know, everything else, you know, in the body. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what happens is like what you're lacking now is the, is the precursor to make your hormones. You're lacking the quality bioavailable protein to make your hair, your nails, your skin. So that's what you're lacking because, um, you're, you don't have the most bioavailable source of this and there's, you're not going to get cholesterol from being a, a vegetarian or a vegan. So, well, vegetarian, unless you have eggs. So that's kind of what you're, what you're running up against. Um, you probably don't eat a lot of butter. So um, that's, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. But I think, um, I think that uh, um, if you can do eggs, try just eggs for, for three days and just see how you feel. Because with eggs, you can get almost all of your nutrients. So that's another option, something that you can do, um, you know, and then ease into it. But, um, but yeah, all the, the nuts and the seeds and the other stuff, it just creates, uh, you get all the precursors, but you don't get the, um, the key bioavailable proteins and you don't have the precursor for these hormones. So your, your hormones starve. So you can take a million supplements. It just doesn't work because the raw material is not there to make them. All of these hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, um, cortisol for stress that to counter stress, uh, they're all made from cholesterol. They're all come from cholesterol. Mm. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's sorry cool. to break the news. All right. Well, will you get back with us, please? Uh, we'd love to hear what's going on with you, Shweta. And I know, you know, as a vegetarian and and, uh, you know, there's certain things that you're just sort of restricted uh, from doing, so you can't experiment all that way. But anyway, thank you for getting back with, or for coming on the show with us. And please do get back with us with what we hope are some great results. And uh, so we're going to go back to social media. But by the way, social media, I know some of you poor folks are getting frustrated because we have every week uh, spammers who will repeat their question, cut and paste, and go over and over and over. And we just want to let you know, and then we time you out. So yes, there is a moderator. And we want you to know that your chances of getting your question answered if you post it 50 times in a row are very, very slim. So, you know, let's just uh, <laughs> just go ahead and put it in there once. Less, go ahead. Less than winning, less, less than um, the chances of winning the Virginia lottery. <laughs> it is. So, Please, let's all be fair online. We really want to get to as many questions as we can. And having 40 or 50 copies of one uh, gums up the works, and then our mean moderator will zap you for that. Uh, but here's some questions that did come through. Uh, and let's see. Uh, Anthony from Facebook, I have a question about your D3, K2 supplements. I want to buy them, but uh, there's so much vitamin B6 in them. That's interesting. What about that? There shouldn't be. There shouldn't be anymore we did lower it um and that that amount that we did have a little bit higher um i actually did a whole uh write-up on that and uh, you, you can try to find you can i think i put that on on the website uh, under under that product so you can see that all the details on it's it's water soluble it's not going to create a problem but we did lower it i'm almost 100 percent sure of that if you look at the new label Wonderful. Okay. Well, thanks for asking that question. I'm glad you got some resolve in there. Ms. The Old Days from YouTube. Uh, by the way, Doc, mm -hmm. your camera cut off. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm fixing that right now. Okay. But I'm while he's right fixing that, to... uh, oh, yeah. Look at that. The yeah. auxiliary camera. Nice. Nothing like some nice. redundancy. All right. Well, you're just equally as handsome on this camera, Doc. So that's good news. <laughs> this is the worst, <laughs> the worst lighting in the world. But, um, that's oh, well, right. we got we got some. Uh, absolutely. So Miss the old days from Rumble. Help, my four-year-old son with autism has been diagnosed with parasitic blasto. Ooh, that looks like cancer. Uh, KD Medical System will only provide him with an antibiotic. Should he take it? What dietary recommendations could you provide? Maybe I should have delved in that. But he has been diagnosed with parasite blastocytosis. Oh. 
Is that? Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I really can't interfere with your doctor's recommendation for a drug. I can't, I can't do that. Um, I, I would say though, um, there are all sorts of, there's things that you can research yourself, um, natural parasite killers, um, any ranging from garlic to, um, wormwood extract. Um, there's a lot more, but yeah. So uh, the medication questions, I think you, we need to get your doctor to answer that question. Okay. Let's go to something more straightforward. Uh, and, uh, and Deza from YouTube, what are the best remedies for fibromyalgia and and Zia? I bet I butchered your name, but there you go. Yeah, the best remedy is, is B1, and natural B1 works great. So um, let's see if I could make that a little better. Wonderful. That's tiny. Um, yeah, natural B1. Um, you take higher amounts of that, and uh, what that does is it helps to um, produce... Um, it actually helps you, your mitochondria engine work better and uh, it gets rid of that excess lactic acid that generates from having too many carbs. So just make sure your carbs are lower if you have fibromyalgia and uh, your B1 goes up. Now, let's say you you do that and you still have a problem. Then that means that you have some virus, maybe an Epstein-Barr virus in remission, in which case you need to um, find out what the heck is stressing you out and see if you can solve that because that usually comes from some type of uh, ongoing chronic stress that keeps that virus live. So we need to put that thing back in remission and um, do that. We've got to get rid of stress no matter what you have to do to handle that. All right. Very good. Quiz question number two, and I'm getting away from the cod liver. Um, let's okay. see. So <laughs> which, which is... is Go ahead, Doc. Sorry. Which is fattier, beef liver or steak liver? Let's see what the answer was. On okay, that. the answer is sixty-five uh, percent respondents say it's beef steak, and thirty-five percent say it's beef liver. Interesting question. Beef liver is actually super low in fat if we compare it to the the, the actual meat. And this is people people think they're getting a lot of fat when they're eating liver. No, it's actually pretty lean. <laughs> which is very surprising to a lot of people. Yeah, that's a little counterintuitive. Well, there you have it, audience. Well, let's see what they think about this next question. There it is, Doc. Number three for the day. Okay, why does testosterone therapy have a, this side effect of t t testicular atrophy? Ouch. Terry, there's hope for you maybe in this answer. Uh, <laughs> So let's see. Let's uh, no, go. There's there's a there's a reason behind this question. So um, yeah, it's um, a lot of people. A lot of people are on hormone replacement ther therapy. They you just need to know the side effects and what happens in the mechanism. All right, very good. Let's go to our new friend Rumble. Tasha, would you recommend some palmetto for women who want to stop their thinning hair? Yes, that wouldn't be a bad idea. That would be good. Um, because that actually can, um, it's an inhibitor of an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, which basically helps you stop making all this powerful um, DHT, which is a powerful type of testosterone. But it's very potent against the hair and uh, causes hair loss, hair thinning. So yes, I would, I would recommend um, taking that. Uh, there's a lot of different inhibitors, um, but I like the fact that you're using a natural one. <clears throat> Okay, uh, interesting question. Uh, Paloa from Facebook, what are your thoughts on artichokes? I have a hard time eating them. Well, maybe you shouldn't eat them. Anyway, what do you think? Well, um, I haven't really thought about an artichoke in, in many years, but um, I think for some people they might be fine. I, I don't know of a, a tremendous amount of benefits one way or the other. So I guess I don't have an opinion on that too much. Um, so... If you choke on them, I'll probably avoid them. Boy, dipped in a little butter, there's something else. But anyway, let's go back to the green room, this time with Tahira, and she's from beautiful San Juan, Puerto Rico, and I can see that she's unmuting herself now for uh, the best performance. And you are on air, and Tahira, if you will, as our, we chase the clock, try to keep your questions short and to the point. Go ahead. Yes. Um, hello, doctor. 
I started fencing about a month ago and I've lost approximately 10 pounds so far. Mm -hmm. I was staying in weight for a moment and then I lost a little more. It's that's normal and those I have to do with the fact that I don't have title. Should we be more patient to see results? Oh, you don't have a thyroid? No. Okay. Yeah, you need to find out where it went and get it back. Um, <laughs> now, what happens, the, the thyroid is, um, yeah, if you don't have a thyroid, it, you just, you're going to have to have more patience because think about what the thyroid does. It has this incredible action of um, controlling your metabolism. So I know you're probably on medication, so you just make sure that's uh, correct. Um, but, but realize, too, that the medication they're giving you uh, is probably T4, which is the inactive version. So one thing that could help you is to add some selenium and maybe some zinc so you get that conversion from the T4 to the active T3. That can help you. And you might be um, the person that needs to do longer fasting or uh, more exercise <laughs> or stricter. Okay, I'm, with I'm, I'm switching right now in 18 hours and I, I need to go more often to the gym. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You can do it, but you're going to have to work harder and have a little more patience. I guess that is, I don't know if you knew, knew this, but this is why we call you a patient. And then we put <laughs> you in a waiting room. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. That's great. Well, get back with us, and uh, thanks for coming to us from beautiful Puerto Rico. And let's see. Let's uh, move on once again. We'll go to um, Facebook this time. What are your thoughts on drinking hydrogen water? I've heard a lot about that. They've been advertising the heck out of that. You know, I um, I, have, I bought the machine. I, I honestly have not tested it enough to to really thoroughly give you an opinion. I I think I heard a lot of great things about it. I have the machine. I just have not really did a full evaluation, so I, I wouldn't be the person to give you an opinion on it. Uh, but it it might be really great. Um, so do your research, check it out, and um, even start taking it and see how you feel. All right, very good. Uh, Shadow Stoic, what a name, from YouTube. Uh, what are your thoughts about estrogen levels? Hmm. Well, you should, yeah, if, if, if it's high or low, excuse me, you want to um, evaluate why it might be high or low because so many people, um, they they have this idea that, oh, I'm low, so I should just take the hormone. But you should ask, why am I low? Um, or why am I high? Am I being exposed to endocrine disruptors, plastics? Um, am I consuming a lot of soy products? Like these are all questions that I would ask. Uh, or if it's low, um, it could be that you need more uh, raw material, that uh, DHEA or um, uh, pregnenolone, which could help build up and balance your, your estrogen. Estrogen in a female and a male body uh, comes from testosterone, which is interesting. So it's all about the control of how much is being released or not. All right. Interesting stuff. Marlene, what causes and heals calcified fibroids? I don't know how bad it is or how long it's been there, but if you just think about something that's calcified, <clears throat> um, it's probably part of the healing process. There was inflammation involved. So the body uses calcium as a, um, a band-aid. And so you may want to try... Um, upping your vitamin K2 to help break, break some of that up. But I'm not sure about the actual, I mean, if it's completely calcified, I don't know what you can do with that. I don't even know if it's reversible. So, um, but yeah, this calcium is, is fascinating because you have um, any area in your body that has been damaged. Uh, you always have calcium deposits that includes your arteries. So does that make calcium bad? No, it just tells us there's inflammation that's bad. So, especially if it's in your arteries. All right, let's see. Let's go to, uh, oh, here's sort of a, a, a cheery note uh, from David on our new friend Rumble. 13 months ago, I started taking Monjero. I guess that's the weight loss stuff to lose weight and improve mm -hmm. my diabetes. Three months ago, I went strict keto and stopped the Monjero and my diabetes is gone. Thank you, Dr. Berg. 
That's awesome. Um, one of the challenges with that, uh, those drugs, um, I'm going to do a video on this, um, is that a lot of people lose their appetite and they can go longer without eating. Right. Um, and they kind of focus on calorie reduction, but what happens with the slower appetite, sometimes they don't have the right foods when they eat. They don't emphasize getting all the right macronutrients. And so they could end up with as one side effect, um, like atrophy of the muscle because they're not having enough protein. So if you are on that medication, you better make sure that your diet, uh, when you do eat is really solid nutrient dense, and it has everything you need to build body tissue. Well, that makes good sense. Uh, Rekovac, Rekovac, maybe from YouTube. I take your cruciferous supplements, the D3K2 electrolytes, liver, cleanse and cod liver oil, speak of the devil, supplements regularly. Do I still need seven cups of veggies a day? Do those things offset your need for veggies? If you are um, doing uh, that, that much, especially the electrolyte powder, you're going to get it. You're going to get a lot of potassium. So you probably don't need that much, but that being said, um, if you're, if you compare like vegetables with salad, um, it's really hard to have seven to 10 cups of broccoli. <laughs> I don't recommend it. Okay. So if you're doing like more dense vegetables, you probably just need like three or four cups. If you're doing, um, salad, then you might need more, especially if you don't get your potassium. Now, if you're doing fasting, let's say you're doing one meal a day the need for that, those nutrients go down because your body becomes more efficient. So I don't expect someone to have one meal a day and have their 10 cups of salad. That's going to be really hard. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, Ddor 11 uh, from YouTube. What's the best solution to treat bunions? <sighs> that's, a, that's a tough one because um, the bunions... Um, yeah, there's so many uh, unknowns about these bunions. You know, is it is it the shoe that's wearing out? Or is it just something that grows on there? Um, there's not a lot of data. I have not found a lot of information on it, um, so I don't really have a solution for that that mystery. That's a that's a tough one. All right, let's see. Um, Shadow Stoic from YouTube. What are your thoughts about using lion's mane? I think it's wonderful for your brain, wonderful for your brain, your cognitive function. Um, it's also been, it has anti-cancer effects. So um, these mushrooms are actually just fascinating because they can really um, do a lot for your entire health and your immune system. All right, very good. Well, Terry and I uh, are trying to figure out where this answer went. Uh, so if we could ask this question again, which why does testosterone therapy have a side effect of testicular atrophy? Audience, if you don't mind, just chime in on that again so we can get that uh, out of the way. Uh, and now let's get some more great questions out of the way. Uh, oh, let's see, I don't want to do that one. Be nice uh, from YouTube. Can you suggest any remedy for chronic runny nose? It is the winter, at least here. Usually if it's a chronic runny nose, it's, it's usually more viral. Um, so in which case, uh, you want to, um, beef up your garlic. Um, I like, uh, olive leaf extract is a really good one as a remedy. And then of course the usual, the vitamin D and the zinc in the vitamin C. All right. Very good. Let's see. Uh, oh, this is some weird stuff. Chris, uh, Chris from Facebook. I've heard you talk about this, Doc. Please discuss the health benefits of diatomaceous earth. Thank you, he says. You have this, uh, these um, silicon particles that um, apparently they, they can help you in, in different areas. They, they help support um, in a very interesting way the microbiome. Um, not in a negative way, but in a positive way. Uh, they also have detoxifying properties um, that won't make you feel sick, but they tend to bind through like a little bit like a chelator. So it kind of hooks up on it like a magnet and just kind of locks up 
certain toxins and things like that. So, um, yeah, so it's good for your, um, your digestive system and especially the microbiome. And, um, you can also use it to kill, uh, certain insects in your house too. Apparently that's, that has some benefits as well. All right. Very good. We've gotten to the bottom. Uh, I guess, pardon the pun, of why does testosterone therapy have a side effect of testicular at- atrophy? And uh, audience, you did answer. We just uh, fumbled uh, that. So quiz qui, uh, 85% say the procedure shuts down natural testosterone production. 15% say it's because it increases estrogen levels, and that equals 100%. Think about um, all these hormones on a, um, they're on a loop, a feedback loop, okay? They're in a communication loop. So I guess, so Steve, have you ever talked to someone that just, they can never be quiet. They keep talking and talking and talking. I don't know talking. what you mean. I've never heard of a person like that. You, okay. So anyway, <laughs> just if you could just pretend there's someone out there like that. Um, the one way to get people to keep talking to you is you just ignore them. And they like the, you never acknowledge them. So then they just keep talking because the <laughs> acknowledgement is kind of like the, the shutoff valve there. Same thing with the communication pathway between this um, testosterone. If you, when you, when you send a signal down and says, okay, testicle, like release the testosterone and then um, it releases it, then that testosterone turns off that, that higher up gland called the pituitary. It turns it off. So now we have this nice uh, thermostat Okay, so it turns off at a certain temperature. Um, but when you take testosterone externally, you're getting messages that are turn off, turn off, turn off. So to the point where your pituitary um, turns off and then the testicle doesn't need to turn on anymore because it's dependent on that external. And then what happens is you end up, um, you know, putting your testicles into severe um, hibernation and um, that's when they start to shrink. So I'm not saying, I'm not telling people not to take the testosterone. Um, I'm just telling, telling you that it comes with a package and um, there might be some side effects, especially if you take it long-term. And even when you come off of it, the problem too is like, it can be permanent. So now you're de- you have to be dependent on external hormones. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up because... If you're debating whether you should do that or not, maybe, just maybe there might be other ways you can solve the problem rather than just take a hormone. That's the only point, Steve, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Well, that's a lot said. And here uh, is our (laughs) next question. This time a true falser. You got a 50-50 chance, audience. True or false. After menopause, the ovaries no longer function. Poor ovaries, if that's true. All right, let's see. Um, oh, did it, did it, what did I say? What did I say? No, you said that's correct. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. No. Okay. I'm just trying to be funny, and I'm losing the battle. Tandem 12 from Rumble. Please share your thoughts on the cause and treatment of lymphoma. I think, um, I think I'm going to avoid that question because it's more of a... Um, it's, it's not an okay question to talk about when you're on YouTube because they can, as soon as you start getting in there uh, into these certain questions, they can potentially, you know, shut down the video. So I think I'll, I'll just kind of not answer that question. All right, very good. Well, Rumble uh, advocates, stay tuned over on that side. Uh, and uh, in keeping with your um, concerns, YouTube, we'll just move right along. Okay, let's see. Uh, how about Elaine from Facebook? Very uncontroversial question. What are your thoughts on red yeast rice supplements? Ever heard of those? Yeah, yeah. That's a really good one um, that mimics the effects of statins. So it blocks the cholesterol production. Um, and it's a natural one. So a lot of people take it to help uh, reduce um, their cholesterol. And also it has other properties to help um, prevent clotting. Uh, so it's a, it's a natural thing. And, you know, of course you'll see where oh, don't take that with your medication and this and that, but it's something to research, something to look at, uh, as a natural version of the statins. Wonderful. Lady devil dog from rumble. Uh, they have the most inventive handles of any of them. 
Let's see, how can uh, I combat binge eating help? And I just love people who are uh, so you know, honest about that because uh, we all have, well, I have that problem. But good for you. So what can we do to help Lady Devil Dog? The, the most important thing is, I mean, here you almost have to, how are you going to pretend that you don't have it in the house, right? It's so hard. So you have to go through your refrigerator, your cupboards, and you have to get the junk out of the trunk. You have to get, just get it out of your house completely. Um, in fact, send us a picture that you've done it so we have proof. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll help you with that. And then what you need to do as well is to av- avoid these carbs for a period of time, uh, two to five days. Um, if you can go that long, then you're set because then the cravings go down. So it makes it easier to, to do it longer. Um, and that being said, I was the worst, worse. I was, uh, I would, it took me many years before I could finally say no, because I had to literally get so sick before I'm like, you know what? It's not worth it anymore. So that was the motivation. Um, I think, I think Steve, I don't know. It's like a lot of people don't make changes until they really hit bottom. Uh, I think it's, it's on, a, on one hand, it, it's a good thing, some of these stresses, because if you were too comfortable and never had a health problem, you know, uh, that might not be motivating as well, because there's no reason to change. I have people that go, well, I don't need to change my diet because I don't have a weight problem. And, you know, you do a CAT scan inside them and you're like, oh, you're, you're skinny fat or you have a clogged arteries, you know, but just because someone is skinny, they think they're healthy. So... Yeah, some of these problems are, are very motivating. Well, it's interesting. Speaking of symptoms, uh, uh, Lori, my wife, in driving one of her cars, a, a guy question is, how's, how's the oil? And the answer is always the same. Oh, it's fine. Well, how do you know? It's because, you know, the car's running. And this is true. One day she called, said the red light's on. I said, pull over, went over there. And she, it was like four, five quarts low. Seize the engine. Now it's not fine. So a little preventative stuff. That's where, you know, if it started clunking or something, she may have noticed. Anyway, uh, sorry, dear, but that's a true story. And uh, I don't know if it has yeah. anything to do with it, yeah. but yeah, just let her run out. And then once it, the symptoms yeah. come, it may be too late. That's awful. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, how Good about... Yeah. Del- oh, we've got answers, by the way, for uh, the quiz question number four, which is a mm-hmm. fun, true, false, or after menopause, the ovaries no longer function... And 70% of our respondents say it's false, that they're still great. 30% say they don't function anymore. You know, believe it or not, um, they still function about 30 to 40%, which is quite high. I was, I was actually very surprised. So they still work to some degree. So if you could keep them, have the option of keeping them, keeping them as long as you can, because um, yes, it is true once you remove them, now you have a backup of the adrenals, but sometimes if the adrenals are stressed out, they don't do all the backing up. So yeah, I think those ovaries are really, really important um, even after menopause. So take care of your ovaries, people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, David from Facebook, what are your dietary recommendations for someone with the horrible Crohn's disease? carnivore because um all these not just grains seed oils sugars and starches but all the nuts and the seeds and the fibers too are just going to tear you up um you need to eat red meat um eggs fish seafood organ meats um and you'll you'll basically find that um you'll get a lot of relief so anything inflammation in the gut anything autoimmune um, you, you should think about that because it eliminates so many irritants. All right. Very good. Let's do our final quiz question of the day. I think we got time. There it is. True or false. The best source of folate, which is vitamin B9 is from leafy greens, not from animal products. All right. Vegetarian versus carnivore right there. Uh, let's see. Let's do that. Did the runny nose. We should probably go to, what about, uh, should we go to Aminza from Ontario? Uh, let's see. Uh, would you read that for me? Because I've got a little different screen. Yeah, Aminza from Ontario. Um, can, uh, I think, can you hear me? Uh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on just a second. Yeah, let's definitely right. go to here. Menza, forgive me uh, for leaving you out there in the cold. And there you are, Menza. If you've unmuted yourself, you're on with Dr. Burke. I mean, Ontario, it's probably slightly cooler up there oh, right she now. She said it's snowy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hi, Dr. Burke. Thank you for Hello. having me. Um, mm-hmm. My question is regarding cystic acne and hair loss. So I've dealt with it for several years now, but um, about a year ago, I got off of antibiotics um, for my pneumonia. And mm-hmm. after that, um, I just had the worst flare up in my acne and my hair loss. And um, I feel like every single month, like my acne is just been getting more cystic, more inflamed, itchy, mm-hmm. um, very stubborn. Um, I've been to several doctors, haven't really gotten any answers, um, gotten blood tests done, everything's come out normal. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been watching your videos and I understand that gut dysbiosis definitely plays a role after antibiotics, but um, I'm having a tough time figuring out like what form I really have because I don't have any major symptoms like bloating or oral thrush or itchiness on my body. It's just on my acne. And um, I understand like there's different diets and protocols, like some, you know, you recommend carnivore, some you recommend to keep eating vegetables. So um, any sort of guidance on like how to narrow it down and which protocol to follow would be great. Thank you. Sure. Um, Can you just tell me real briefly, what do you eat? Generally speaking, what do you tend to, what kind of foods do you eat now? Um, So I typically like morning, like I have eggs with um, like some sprouted bread. Um, I have a lot of like red meat, chicken. I eat like pretty much all vegetables. Um, I avoid sugar, avoid seed oils, avoid junk food, processed food. I don't eat out. Um, I take a lot of your supplements that you recommend, um, like vitamin D, B, like I have a B complex. Cod liver oil has been really good for me. Um, but yeah, a bit of everything, but I'd say like I eat fairly clean, but yeah, mm. a bit of everything. Yeah, see, the, the challenge um, for some people that take the antibiotic um to get that uh, that microbiome back to where it, where it was, sometimes it could take a very long period of time. That's what's really interesting because people think, oh, I can get it back pretty quick. Um, so the question is, what do you? How do you get it back? Do you just take a probiotic? Um, well, maybe, but then do you take a prebiotic? Uh, a lot depends on um, um, on a lot of factors. So. Um, I think that what I would do is I would try three experiments. Okay. So you don't, so then you know what it is. Um, the first thing I would do is I would, um, and I think, are you taking cod liver oil right now? Yes. I take it two to three times a day. The supplements that you have. Okay, good. Okay. So this is the first experiment I would, um, and I'm guessing you're probably, you're taking a probiotic as well. I, I eat sauerkraut like almost every day. Okay. So what I would do as a first experiment is I would, they have a, a really powerful, um, heavy duty, um, what's it called? It starts with a V and I can't remember it. You'll have to look it up, but it's a powerful probiotic. And uh, I think it's called the V something three. I would take that, take small amounts and build up just so you could fortify your gut, um, and do that. And if it's going to work within like maybe a week or so, you should start seeing some changes in that. Uh, so that's, that's the first experiment. The second experiment is to uh, do the carnivore okay. for a week and uh, see what your skin does because we don't know um, what's happening deep inside your body. And if we can bring insulin down to zero, and then that's going to actually lower your androgens because some somehow you're having more androgens. I'm not saying you have... PCOS or something like that, but there's definitely an androgen issue there. Third thing I would do is uh, get a metabolomic testing, which basically goes right deep inside your cells and it tells us exactly what's going on with your biochemistry. It's a, it's a bit more expensive test, but that test will just look inside your mitochondria, look at, um, instead of just like a blood test, we're looking at like 3,000 different things and we can visualize like what's really going on in this stubborn problem that you have. So that's what I would do. Okay, for sure. Thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. And enjoy the nice weather up there. I'm sure summer's <laughs> right around the corner. And um, 
So yeah, and Minza, I'm sorry for leaving you in the green room to rot. That's so awful. Doesn't mean I don't like you. I just got distracted. But anyway, thank you, and, and we'd love to hear back from you, Minza, on that. And by the way, I know we're short on time here, but we did get an answer for the final question. The true falser asked the best folate is from leafy greens, not from animal products. And 55% say it's false. 45% say it's true. What do you say, Doc? Well, guess what? The the most folate comes from chicken livers huh and then beef liver uh but it's not a lot of in meat there's some in meat and um yes dark leafy greens for sure um but you do get in a lot of other foods too uh eggs and uh, a little bit in fish uh, but believe it or not uh, this is why like if you're on the carnivore you should probably do some chicken liver or beef liver here and there too not just yeah one thing over and over and over again but uh, that being said, thanks for putting up, putting up with uh, my mess, messing up with the camera. Stay tuned for some more videos. I will see everyone next Friday, same place, same time.